Welcome back to the Rum Cave. I'm Steve the Barman and I want to help you with rum cocktails. So let's start our beginner's journey. What is rum? Rum is produced all around the world and all of those countries and islands will have their own particular rules and regulations about production. But essentially to break it down to the bare basics, rum is made from sugar, whether that's molasses, sugar cane or sugar cane juice. Molasses being a byproduct of refining sugar cane. There are a few different ways to classify rum, each with their own different styles, which basically comes down to the way they are produced, distilling methods and aging processes. Now, if we relate this to the Caribbean and the West Indies, we will traditionally have three styles of rum. You've got your English rums, which will be Jamaica, Trinidad, Barbados, St. Lucia. We've got a Spanish style of rums, which will be Cuba, Puerto Rico, Venezuela, and the Dominican Republic. And then we've got our French style of rums, rum agricole, which would be islands like Martinique and Guadeloupe. Now, as more and more countries and islands get involved in distilling rums, those guidelines, those classifications get a bit blurred. But traditionally speaking, if we go back to those Caribbean islands, the West Indian islands, then essentially speaking, the Spanish and English styles of rums will be distilled from sugarcane or molasses, whereas the French rum agricoles will be distilled from sugarcane juice. Now, the famous rums that don't really sit too well in any of those categories would be rums from Central America. They can be a bit sweeter with a bit more sugar added to them, but inherently, some of them are really, really tasty. I really do love Central American rums. We're talking Ron Zacapa from Guatemala. We've got Colombia and Dictador. And then we've got Diplomatico from Venezuela. But Venezuela is traditionally a Spanish style of rum and Pampero, I think, is very different to, Dic to Diplomatico. But to get too bogged down in that at the moment is gonna be way too technical. So instead, we're gonna explore a much easier way to classify rum, something that you can relate to very easily. So while throughout this series of videos, I'm still gonna to refer to English, Spanish, and French style of rums, Traditionally speaking, you will be more at home with these classifications. We're talking light rum, we're talking gold rum, we're talking aged rum, we're talking dark rum, we're talking navy and overproof rum, we're talking spiced rum and flavoured rum. But then actually we should still be talking about Demerara based rums and rum agricole. So as you can perhaps start to appreciate now, rum is a very big beast. You can disappear down so many different rabbit holes. The thing you have to remember is that all rum tastes different. Just because it says rum in the bottle, it is gonna taste completely different, island to island, style to style. And the best way to describe this, this is an analogy that I use a lot because people can relate to this. For some reason, they comprehend wine. Uh, a lot more easily than they do rum. And the big way I describe this, wine, people can relate grapes being very different. For instance, in New Zealand, Sam well, Sauvignon Blanc grape is gonna taste very different to a Chardonnay, which in turn is gonna taste very different to a Pinot Grigio. But to get even more in depth, a Sauvignon Blanc wine produced in New Zealand is gonna taste very different to a Sauvignon Blanc uh, produced in South America, Chile, for example. And that all comes down to the climate, the soil, the humidity, the way the grapes, the vines are grown, the production methods. So even though you might have two identical grape varieties, country to country, they're gonna taste completely different. And rum is no different to that. An English style rum produced in Barbados is gonna taste very different to an English style rum produced in Jamaica, which in turn is gonna taste very different to a Spanish style rum produced in uh, the Dominican Republic or Cuba. Just because it will say rum on the front of the bottle and it may be aged for three or five years, it doesn't matter. They are gonna taste very, very different. Different. So here's some things to remember. When we're talking about light rums, not all light rums are unaged. In fact, quite a lot of them will be aged for three years, which will kind of give those guided golden hues because of the oak barrels. However, a lot of the light rums have been charcoal filtered to take the color away, but the taste remains. However, some of the cheaper brands will light rums, they won't have been aged at all, or some of them may have been aged for about three months in steel tanks. And then we're talking about golden rums, you have to remember, not all golden rums are aged longer than white rums. The simple fact is, and this is especially rings true with some of the big brands, they are allowed to use a tiny bit of coloring, maybe a tiny bit of caramel to promote consistency and color their rums up. So just because you see a golden rum, don't automatically assume it's aged longer than a light rum. The chances are, 
they will be the same. And then going back to light rums, some light rums might be have might have a, a lot smoother mouthfeel as they go down because the charcoal filtering will have taken away the kind of edginess to the actual rum. And that's when you kind of get the tropical fruits that come out. You may get hints of pineapple, may get hints of coconut in some of these light rums. Now, golden rums will have a certain amount of complexity to them, especially the rums that are kind of three, five year old, because they would have taken on characteristics from traditionally bourbon barrels. You'll start to get notes of vanilla, of oak, of toffee coming from those barrels into the rum. But the other thing to wrap your head around as well, not all dark rums age longer than gold rums or light rums. The simple fact is a lot of brands will add um, molasses or caramel colorings to darker rum to promote that dark color. In fact, some of the bigger brands Darker rums would have been aged a lot, lot less than some of your golden rums. You just have to know what to look out for. But characteristics from a proper kind of dark rum, you're gonna get dried fruit notes, you're gonna get coffee notes, you're gonna get chocolate notes, as well as the kind of vanilla and oak and toffee that comes off the barrels. Now, when we're talking about aged rums, there is a bit of a crossover between aged rums and golden rums. Some golden rums will have aged statements on the bottles, some won't. But traditionally speaking, we with aged rums, we are talking anything from three years old and over, potentially five, eight, 10, 12. The lower aged rums, your three, five, eight-year-olds will be great for cocktails. However, some of them will be equally as good sipping neat. But then you would get, when you go up to the eight, 10, 12, 15-year-old rums, you wouldn't necessarily use them in cocktails. They will be great sipping rums. But then this is where you start to get different characteristics from different islands, from different climates, from different white methods of production because you'll get some kind of aged rums that will be leathery and tobacco coffee notes coming through. You'll get other aged rums that will be more vanilla-y, more toffee-fied from more oaky-fied coming from the barrels. And then in other aged rums, you'll be getting notes of like pineapple and uh, pineapple and banana. Jamaica, I'm looking at you. They are very famous for their kind of banana-y style rums. Now, I don't want you to get that confused with a flavoured banana rum. I'm talking nothing like that. I'm talking proper out-and-out rums where you get subtle hints of banana and those tropical fruits coming through. Now let's talk about the other styles of rum. Let's go to Navy Strength and Overproof. Typically speaking, Navy Strength is anything kind of over 54% because that's the kind of ABV that gunpowder was still, still igniting rum. I think it's 54.5, don't hold me to that. But uh, essentially they are rums that haven't been diluted as much, haven't, there hasn't been as much water added to them to bring them down. So they high, are a higher ABV. And the big overproof ABV is obviously 151, which relates or translates in English to 75.5% ABV. 151 being proof, 151 proof, which is 75.5% uh, ABV. Now to most people, Navy strength and overproof rums, they will be great for cocktails um, and kind of imparting short bursts of flavor, bumping up the proof. But you know what? Some of the overproof rums are absolutely delicious to drink neat. You just got to be very brave to do so. And then because of the higher ABV, you'll get again different characteristics coming out in the rum. You'll get kind of rich dried fruits. You'll get chocolate notes. You'll get banana notes coming through. And in some cases in the darker sort of overproof rums, you'll even get hints of coffee. Now let's quickly turn our attention to rum agricole, the French style of rums. Also very, very similar to Brazilian cachaça. Now, unless you're a native to a French kind of Caribbean island, traditionally speaking, rum agricole is not gonna be one for you to drink neat. They are very different in taste because of the way they're produced. They're distilled from sugarcane juice, which is gonna bring home those vegetal notes, the grassy notes coming from the sugarcane. This is where the terroir really comes out to play, the climate, the soil, the humidity, everything really comes out to play in agricole rums. But the one big use, except for those people that really love French, French agricole rums um, to kind of drink neat, but the big use for these is in cocktails. They will add a certain funkiness to cocktails. And I'll, discuss, I'll talk about that funkiness in the future videos, but it will give you that extra dimension to rum cocktails, which is phenomenal. Now let's talk about Demerara rum. Demerara rums will traditionally be English style of rums, the big kind of, well, I was gonna say island, but mainland is Guyana, El Dorado behind me, the typically produced Demerara based rums. They are, can be slightly sweeter. Now I'm not talking spiced rum sweet, but they can be slightly sweeter in taste simply because they are distilled from molasses. Again, that byproduct, treacle essentially. 
essentially that byproduct of refining sugar. Give you a, a totally different mouthfeel again, slightly thicker, slightly more syrupy, not thick, but just slightly more syrupy as it goes down. Rich fruit notes, you kind of get uh, chocolate coming through as well. Just love them Herrera style rums. Now let's talk about one of my favorite categories, spiced rums. Uh, Long-term followers of me will know I love my spiced rums, but I kind of want to start to make this clear to people now because not all spiced rums are created equal. In fact, spiced rums get a lot of hate from the rum community. Rightly or wrongly, that's for you to decide. But essentially, just to break it down into spiced rums, there are two, for me, there are, make it easy for you, there are two different styles of spiced rums. There are rums, proper out and out rums that have been spiced, and then there are basically what we kind of know in the UK, the big ones that do the round, they are essentially liqueurs, rum-based spirit drinks. They'll be not great rum, Terrible rum, in fact, in some cases, but you'll never know because they are sweetened up, they have plenty of sugars added, plenty of flavours added. To kind of break this down very, very loosely, we've got stuff like Chairman's Reserve, we've got Duppy's Share, uh, and a couple of others. They will be the base rums, the proper rums. So take Chairman's Reserve Spice, they will be that rum just simply spiced up. Whereas we've got other brands behind me down there, which will simply be uh, cheap, unaged rum that it's just simply been sweetened and flavoured up. That's nothing wrong with them, That's I'm not slagging them, that's just something I want you to comprehend. Between spiced rums, they'll be very, very different, okay? Some of them will be sweet, some of them will be out and out proper rum with just a little extra hint of spice. Now, back in the day, traditionally spiced rums were kind of uh, vanilla, lime, ginger, maybe a hint of cinnamon and clove. However, these days, everything goes behind my bum. I've even got one with raspberries. Uh, so not a raspberry flavoured rum, but I've got one with raspberry and raspberry powder and star anise in there. So spiced rums can literally be anything these days. And then of course we get into flavoured rums again, which traditionally speaking will be the worst of the worst rums, just simply flavoured up to kind of master taste. They're cheap, they're mass produced. I'm not saying they're bad, I'm not saying they're terrible. They do get a lot of hate from the rum community, but you can have a lot of fun with them. But don't get it into your head that something like DMF is the same quality of rum as some of these guys. They won't be. They'll just be cheaper, the cheapest of the cheap rum, uh, and just simply flavoured up. But they do make really fun drinks. So to answer the question, which is the best rum for cocktails? The answer is literally down to, right, down to you. First of all, you've really, for me personally, you've really got to nail your, your, nail your style. Do you prefer English style of rums? Do you prefer Spanish style of rums? Do you prefer French style of rums? And then you've got to narrow down your category. Do you like light rums? Do you like dark rums? Do you like aged rums? Do you like lighter golden rums that haven't been aged so much? Do you like Demerara rums? That is the only way you can find your best rum for cocktails. But I do also love the fun side. I do also love my spiced rums. And you can create so many uh, traditional rum cocktails with spiced rums to give them a whole different new sort of element and direction. But hopefully as you'll now start to appreciate, even though I do love my spiced rums, essentially spiced rums and flavoured rums are no more than liqueurs rum-based spirit drinks. They are not rum. I'm not saying discount them. I'm not saying that at all, but they are not rum. But for me personally, I do really see spiced rum as the gateway. It's the entry level to normal rum because if you start off with the sweeter style of rum and then maybe progress onto kind of a more traditional spiced rum, like your Chairman's Reserve, like your Duppy Shares, once you, your palate goes from sweet to them, then from them you can really start to appreciate all the weird and wonderful world of rum. Would I start you off in, in a Jamaican or a Spanish age style of rum? Potentially not. If that was your first encounter with rum, I probably wouldn't go there. I would definitely work up to it. But starting off, there is so many different places you could start off with. We'll cover that in a future video. And in fact, check out that video because that's really going to help you on your rum journey.